Hello, welcome to the latest episode in our uh, Type R Evolution series. Um, you might remember from the last episode, we saw Martin drive through Dartmoor, giving the car a bit of a shakedown after the new engine, turbo and other hardware had been fitted. After that, I took the car home and I've been driving it as much as I possibly can for the last six weeks or so. Um, with a car like this and with a build that's this complicated, it's very important to make sure that the car is behaving as you want it to under all conditions. So when you're driving fast, when you're driving slowly, when you're doing daily stuff. And so far it's been great. There have been a couple of little things that we've changed along the way, um, but it's been fantastic. And we're very close now to uh, having a final sign off of the car. Uh, this will be the penultimate episode in our series. Um, the reason why there will be one more is that uh, there's a little bit more work to do with the engine and the tuning, which I'll explain in a bit more detail later on. Uh, but the purpose of this episode is to show you what we've done, show you what we changed after the unfortunate uh, episode on officially gassed, and also to take you out for a ride in it. Because uh, with a car like this, you can really only uh, enjoy it and really get a feel for how visceral and how raw it is uh, when you come along for a ride. So we're gonna do that. So what we'll do now is pop the bonnet, I'll show you all the stuff that we've changed with the new setup and uh, yeah, then we'll go for a drive. Here is the heart of the beast. I think that this is one of the best looking uh, Subaru and Pretza engines I've seen. It's certainly a lot better looking than what we had before. Uh, let me explain what we've got here. So we have an EJ22 block. We use a 2.5 litre crank to give us a longer stroke and that gives us about 2.35 litres of engine capacity. Um, the EJ22 block, as you might know already, is the strongest closed deck block that Subaru ever made. So it's a great starting point uh, for a big power build. Um, the engine uh, has lots and lots of fantastic parts and actually um, this is an engine that used to live in a different car. It used to live in our uh, ET2 uh, demo car, the hatchback. And that's relevant for a reason I'll explain in a minute. After the previous mishap with the engine officially gassed, I decided that what we would do is we would take the engine out of ET2, plonk it in here, make a few changes, and see how, how we got on. Um, so the spec of this engine is it's fully forged of course it's got uh, omega pistons it runs arrow rods both of those were supplied by our friends at roger clark motorsport uh, it runs a very nice aluminium uh, process west uh, intake manifold which if you ask my youngest son looks like a spaceship has landed on the top of the engine um, we are running a garrett g35 1050 turbocharger we're huge fans of the G-Series by Garrett, and uh, this is a, a fantastic match to the, uh, to the spec of this engine. Um, I, I sometimes think of this car as having the best of all the generations of Subaru and Pretza. So of course, it's a two-door classic in Pretza, really sought after these days, beautiful car to look at. It has the running gear from a new age car, so 2002 to 2008. So it has a plated limited slip diff in the back. It's got a Quaif limited slip diff in the front. It has a six speed STI gearbox, which uh, is strong enough to handle the power that this thing puts out. Um, it also runs from the 2008 car, the hatchback shape, uh, the cylinder heads. So these are the cylinder heads that started their life uh, on my old uh, hatchback. And that's significant because in that generation of car, Subaru introduced variable valve timing on both the inlet and the exhaust side. And that gives us more opportunity to tune and ultimately gives us more power and torque lower down in the rev range. So it's the best of all worlds and the best of all generations. Um, we have at the moment not tuned and plumbed in uh, entirely the nitrous system. So currently this car has been tuned to 770 horsepower using 28% uh, methanol, uh, the rest 99 octane 
pump fuel. We have deliberately tuned it quite conservatively because we wanted to make sure that everything was as we expect it to be. So it runs, I think, peak boost of just over two bar, um, which is well within the capacity of both the engine and the turbocharger. Um, and we're running, as I say, just 28% uh, mixture of methanol. What we will do next and what we'll cover in the next episode in this series, in the final episode in this series, is the final tuning of it. So we are going to increase the boost pressure. We are going to use more methanol. Can never have too much. And we're going to, uh, to switch on the nitrous system. The nitrous system is a 100 shot. So uh, in theory, it could give us an extra 100 horsepower, but we're very unlikely to try and um, uh, meet the complete capabilities of the system. What we're going to do instead is something very, very cool. And actually there was a, an announcement recently by Link who supplied the, uh, the ECU that manages all of this hardware, that they are going to uh, provide their very latest software platform into the G4X generation of ECUs. Why is that significant? Well, what it means is we can have a very sophisticated nitrous control table in the ECU. And the plan is to have the nitrous coming in at sort of 25% duty low down and stay quite stable as the revs rise and then in, when we're in certain settings on the ECU when we get above a certain level probably about 6,000 revs something like that and as long as full throttle is applied um, we'll, we'll apply a lot more nitrous duty into the system. I don't know what kind of power we're going to see. What, what we're definitely going to see is a huge increase in torque from both the extra methanol and from the nitrous and it's going to be a fascinating thing to see. Um, have a look at this. On the screen now, you should see two dyno graphs. Um, the graph at 839 horsepower is the engine that was previously in this car. That engine was an EJ22, uh, just like this, um, but it, it ran a different turbo. It ran a Zona Rotor 9569S, and the thing was absolutely monstrous. The other dyno graph uh, shows 770 horsepower, which is the output from this engine. Now, you might think, Okay, so Rob has sacrificed some power here. Why would he do that? Well, what we have gained is a huge amount more drivability. So what we have at 5,000 revs is, with this car, 550 brake horsepower at 5,000 revs. With the other setup, with the Zona Rotor Turbo, which is a larger unit, at the same revs, 5,000, we had 400 brake horsepower. So we have gained an extra 150 horsepower at 5,000 revs which let's face it, although this car can rev to eight and a half thousand, you're really only in that mid range when you're pushing on. And what I can tell you, and you'll see in a minute when we go for a drive, is it's just fast everywhere. Minimal lag, loads and loads of response, loads of shove, it's uh, really, really impressive. Exactly how you want a Subaru to drive. Uh, so we've sacrificed a little bit of outright power so far, uh, but I think what we've gained is a much better car I think the car is faster than it was before, and I think it's much more drivable. It's not a fair comparison because with the old setup, we were running 50% methanol to get to 840 horsepower. And actually, my hunch is that when we run the same 50% mixture with this engine, when we run the same kind of boost level, and especially when we switch on the nitrous, we'll probably get very, very close to 840 horsepower, if not exceed it. And I think what we'll see with the dyno graph is a lot more low down torque. And I think when we put this car up against the clock, uh, we'll see that it's faster. Um, the quickest quarter mile time that I've ever recorded in this car is 10.8 seconds. I think that it's got more in it. And I think with this setup, uh, we should be into the mid tens. So um, I'll stop wittering on. Uh, let's go for a drive and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> first climb aboard the Type R, one of the first things you notice is how low you sit. I always
always much prefer to sit low in a car, a performance car, so you get a sense of actually being in it rather than perched on top of it. And adding to the race car feel is this safety devices cage, the OMP Alcantara wheel, which is nice and small, really easy to grip hold of. It's just a really nice place to be. Driving position with the GC8 generation of Impreza is just perfect. Everything is where it needs to be. Good visibility. It gives you a lot of confidence when you want to push on. One of the things that I've noticed as well, moving from a Cyvex ECU to a Link ECU, is that the car has become a lot more drivable at low speed. That might sound like a churlish thing to consider important when you've got this sort of power, because it's not like you're going to daily a car like this. But it really does make a difference to your enjoyment of it, because you want it to be able to handle first and second gear stuff without shaking all over the place. Besides the, the performance that the engine delivers, the car really is a complete package. So despite the fact it's a light car, weighs about 1330 kilos, we're running Alcon brakes, front and rear, six piston calipers at the front, four at the back, huge stopping power, fantastic initial bite. I've never got them to fade. I think you'd have to be really going some. And the drivetrain itself, you know, given with the exception of the front LSD, it's all Subaru OEM from the gearbox, the drive shafts, the diffs themselves, apart from the front LSD. All standard Subaru stuff. Incredible, really. side of this car we've got the Haltec IC7 dash it tells you everything you need to know very customizable what I can see just with a quick glance down is exhaust gas temperature methanol content in the fuel oil temp oil pressure boost pressure I can see coolant temperature fuel pressure and I can see coolant pressure now, coolant pressure is a really interesting thing and you know there's a running joke about this engine EJ engines in particular about going through head gaskets if you have a head gasket problem coolant pressure tends to increase so having that on a gauge is no bad thing and fuel pressure is an also quite a useful thing to see because with a car like this with such a big fuel system you know it's running eight injectors we're running a radium twin pump hanger in the in the fuel tank and a fuel cooler you kind of want to see what the fuel pressure is doing because if that starts to become a problem you need to know about it and of course all of these parameters that I can see here are linked to alarms so before even the ECU will cut in to protect the engine if there's a problem the Haltech dash is telling me all about it what we've also got from Link again is one of their CAN keypads and on this car we've got four buttons so no, no huge crazy array of buttons just the ones you need so we've got the anti-lag system on or off we've got a button to arm the nitrous system and we've got boost up and down my favorite button in this car is one that I haven't actually been able to use there this this will come 
the final uh, tuning session by Martin and it's this one here. There's a little carbon fibre plate mounted behind the steering wheel with a button on it and this will be my rolling launch button. So essentially I'll hold this, floor the throttle, the boost will start to build but the car will not actually start to accelerate until I come off the button. So if you're in a roll race situation, that's ideal because you've got all that lovely boost that's building up. And as soon as you come off the button, you're deploying it. to the previous setup with the Zona Rotor Turbo, as I mentioned earlier on when we were in the car park, this car feels an awful lot more responsive and alive. It didn't feel like it was unresponsive before, but you know what it's like until you've experienced something different, you don't know quite what's available and I didn't think that for a second we could have a four-cylinder nearly 800 horsepower car that's as docile and easy to drive as this one it really does it all so 550 horsepower at 5,000 revs it's no joke you have to be paying attention especially with the front limited slip differential because you can feel it grip and you can feel it start to do its job so it seeks out all of the undulations in the road, any imperfections. So you need to be holding on. 